Good morning, church family. It's time for us, past time for us to begin our service. We ask everyone to please mute your phone as we now enter into praise service. going to notice hymn um, 162 in the red and 435 in the tan. Um, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Oh, my Oh, say. 
Let's hold an everlasting God. We come to you this morning, Father God, giving you all the grace and honor. Thank you, Father God, for another day, Father yes. God, that yes, you Lord. have blessed us, Father God. We rely on God to you all things are possible, Father God. And we ask in faith, Father God, that you continue to be with us, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless the sick and shed in all over the world, just unjust, Lord. We ask, Father God, that you walk with us all. Show us the way, Father. We need your guidance, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you keep us and hold us in the hollow of our hand. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. When I need him most, when I need him most, you know that Jesus steps right in. Your people about you 
and share what you have blessed me to receive from you in order to bless your people and to glorify you. I ask you, Lord, that you, Lord, and you alone speak through me. Thou art the potter, and I am your clay. I am your humble servant. Let my words and ideas cease and allow your divine will, words, thoughts, flow through me directly to and for these your people. Please, Father God, keep me rooted in your word. Guide me, O oh God, direct me, and lead me, O oh Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask you not only convict my heart, but Lord, also convict the hearts of any and all who may hear this sermon. I pray that you, God, order my steps and keep me grounded, rooted, and focused on your word and your will. Lord God, cultivate a passion within me for your word, for your will, and for your purpose. I pray that your words will fall on fertile ground as you have related to us in your holy scriptures about your holy word. Lord God, please allow my application to be your application. Help me, Lord, to remain focused and never allow my ego to edge you out. Heavenly Father, Finally, Lord, I ask that you remove my wants and wishes and replace them with your holy mandate. I ask you, Holy Ghost, to speak through my vocal cords and my heart. Enable me to study your word and retain your thoughts, your scriptures and word. I pray this sermon of prayer in the matchless name of Yahweh God, the Father, Yeshua, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I will be coming to you from a few passages, all of which were written by Paul, the Apostle. My first scripture is going to be, my scripture text, will be 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, the 9th through the 10th verse. 2 Corinthians, 12th chapter, 9 through the 10th verse. Romans. 12th chapter, 1 through the 2nd verse. Romans, 12th chapter, 1 through the 2nd verse. And finally, my supplemental scripture will be Romans, 10th chapter, 9th verse. My supplemental scripture will be Romans, 10th chapter, and the 9th verse. I shall begin reading 2 Corinthians, 12th chapter, 9 through 10. And it begins thus, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I'm now going to read Romans 12, chapter 1 through the second verse. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies, your a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye conformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My supplemental scripture for your reading will be Romans 10 and 9th verse. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And my sermonal subject this morning is the place where the miracle occurred. The place where the miracle occurred. Good morning, God Fair. Once again, I do hope and pray that you're doing well this morning and hopefully feeling well as well this morning. I do not intend to be before you very long. I plan to merely give you what thus says the Lord. There is a word from God for his people. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer is for Israel 
that they might be saved. The author of both of our scripture texts this morning is the apostle known as Paul. As well, Paul, as you know, was known as Saul. He was a devout Jew that was most known for being a persecutor of the early Christians following Christ's death and eventual ascension back to the Father, his resurrection and his ascension back to the Father. Most of you may recall the road to Damascus story where Saul was confronted by the Holy Spirit. It was on this infamous road where Saul literally, physically, and spiritually saw the light. I was hoping that number five recently, his recent COVID-19 coronavirus infection as a result of testing positive for COVID, I was hoping that that might be his road to the masses experience. But I think it may have to take him a little bit more. I believe it made him just worse off than he already was. Saints continue to pray for number 45. Pray that he will have his will, that God will have his will and his way in Donald J. Trump's life. Thank God that in the case of Saul, at least Saul saw the light and turned his life over to Christ and changed his name from Saul to Paul. Paul went on to not only preach God's word from that point on, Paul also wrote seven letters to the churches. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. These, ch these churches scattered throughout Asia Minor, Greece, and Rome. Paul was dedicated, he was as dedicated a Christian as he had been a persecutor of the early Christians. I learned in Bible study that Paul, being an early devout Jew, when he was then known as Saul, he was and actually thought and he believed that he was doing God's will. And being a faithful Jew, following the law which allowed Jews to put to death all of those that blasphemed against the universal God that all Jews followed at that time. That is how the high priest, Caiaphas, justified the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. By the way, it was on Calvary, on a hill called Gotham, where the first miracle occurred for those of us that believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Somebody ought to shout it right there. Those of us who have decided to follow Jesus show you how the miracle of Christ's death, his resurrection, and his ascension, leaving us with the comforter, the Holy Ghost, continues to be the place where the miracle continues to occur throughout our spiritual and our physical lives. First and foremost, once we surrender our lives to Christ, Romans 10 and 9, our supplemental scripture instructs us that to confess Christ with our mouths and our hearts, we confess the Lord Jesus. We must then believe in our hearts that God has in fact raised him, his son, from the dead with all power. We would then be saved. I'm so glad that when Jesus rose with all power, he rose in our lives as well. He rose in my life. Has he risen in your life? Somebody should be shouting right there. After we initially become saved, we learn by getting into and reading his word and also fellowshipping with other saints in a church of your choice. We can progress from being babes in Christ to even more mature Christians. This is the time when you have to look at our scripture text where it says in Romans 12, 1 through 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. You see, once we become saved, we have to present our entire bodies and our spirit. In the old days, in the days of law, the Jews always presented incense and animals, fat and what have you. These were the 
sacrifices that they gave to Almighty God. But when Christ came, he was the Holy Lamb. He was the precious Lamb of God. We sing a song, the precious Lamb of God, which is what he truly was. And as Christ has sacrificed his life, so too we must sacrifice our lives and our spirits in order to live holy lives, to live holy lives and be not conformed. Being conformed is like a leaf blowing in the wind. But when you're transformed, you change from that leaf blowing in the wind. You stand up like a strong tree for Jesus. You've been transformed. You don't do the things that you used to do. You've been transformed. You don't go to the places that you used to go to. But you've been transformed. You don't even talk the way that you used to talk. People notice this in you. And they know that there's been a change in your life. God will make a change in your life. This is how you become a mature Christian. Of course, it's necessary to find the right house of worship where you can then assemble yourself to other like-minded worshipers. Now, please note, you don't get saved and that's it. I'm saved, I'm going to heaven because my seat is reserved, I'm done. No, no, no. There are no season ticket holders to the everlasting Father, to the everlasting heavens. No, my brothers and sisters, when you make a decision to serve the Lord, you have just begun a lifelong journey that is a marathon, not a sprint. Matthew 24 and 13 states, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endurance is what leads to eternal life. You do not want to continue to live in sin because the wages of sin is death or total and eternal separation from God. Now, who wants to be totally and eternally separated from God the Father? I know I don't. Oh, my God. I cannot even imagine what that would be like. In order to endure to the end, you must know that endurance means you're going to have to go through some things. It's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to feel good. As it states in the scripture text, you must not conform to this world, but you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, what a change has come over me. Now that you're saved, pray and read your Bible daily. And hold on, wait for it. Even after you do all the things that you know God wants you to do. But things still don't seem quite right. It seems like the more you do the right thing, bad things continue to happen. The next thing you begin to experience is the feeling of being weak. This is what Satan wants you to feel. He wants you to feel weak. When you thought you would be feeling strong by now, I want you to know, beloved, that no matter how long, how long you've been saved, or how long you've been in the church, as always, as long as you are on this earth, you will have things that you will be subjected to. You will have things that you will be confronted with. And you will have things that you will have to go through. As saints of God, we're going to have to go through some things. I just stopped right here this morning to let you know that I've got some good news. When Paul prayed to God in the scripture text, Paul asked God to heal him of his birth in his flesh three times. And three times, Paul was not healed by God of his birth in his flesh. Instead, God, when you continue to read the text, you will begin to realize that even in your sickness, even in your worst dilemma, even when all hope is gone, God will always be there for you. He said his grace is sufficient. God will always be there for you. He will never leave nor forsake you. God will show you in your weakest point. God will tabernacle and rest on you. I'm going to say it again. He will tabernacle and find his rest on you along with his power. That's and therein lies the true mystery of the awesome power of Christ. Paul said that I can actually rest and rejoice in my worst time because Paul said when we are weak, we are strong in Christ. Only God can turn a mess into a message. Only God can turn a test into a testimony. Only God can turn a trial into a victory. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I brought along seven promises of God for you this morning. Number one, 
He said, I am your strength. Number two, he said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Number three, he said, I have plans for you to prosper. Number four, I hear all of your prayers. Number five, I will always fight for you. And number six, I will give you peace. Number seven, I will always, always, always love you. Thank God, this is where the place where the miracle occurs. Things good and bad will occur during this walk through life. Keep in mind with God, we can endure all things. We are spiritual beings. We're passing through this temporary journey, through this earth in the physical form. But one day, we will return to the essence. We will return to the spirit. That is the reason why we worship God in spirit and in truth. Hold on to his unchanging hand. In our weakness is the place where the miracle occurs. In our weakness is the place where the miracle occurs. As Christ's power, as his word says, it will rest on us. It soothes us. It rejuvenates us. It rejuvenates our spiritual as well as our physical. In strength. I often, when I get problems with my back, and I always testify about it, and I pray God take it away. For some reason, I seem to still have it. But I notice that part of my pain management is I have to turn over on the stomach and I have to pray to my father. And I have to pray to him. And somewhere during that prayer, when I start out the confession, and then I move on to adoration, and then I go right into thanksgiving. And after thanksgiving, I begin to pray the prayer of intercessory, where I pray for someone other than myself. Then I go into petition prayer. And I continue to be in the prayer for more. I don't say amen right away. I begin to consecrate myself and I begin to meditate on God. I don't tell him about my problems. I don't tell him about my situations. I just bless his name. I bless his name. And somehow between that prayer, I seem to feel a little bit better than before I prayed. So for me, I find strength during my weakest time. And I also find strength during my weakest time when I'm working, when I'm under attack. Those of you that know, know I work at the unemployment office. And right about now, that's a hard place to work, given the situation in our society with COVID and unemployment, and folks don't have jobs, people want their checks, the state may or may not have money, things are going on, we're so busy there, I had to call the police at least three times in the last three months. So I'm under a lot of stress where I work, making folks, making sure they wear their masks. But I know that before I go to work in the morning, I put on my full arm of God. And I ask the Lord to order my steps, curb my tongue, and show me that in the midst of my, my carnal job, that I can still show my spiritual side. And I actually get to witness every once in a while to some of the folks that come through there. And that's always a good thing. I attached a well-known song for you to comfort you while you're going through whatever it is that you're going through. This is a very well-known song. We all know it from childhood, probably. But it's written a little differently, and I want to share it with you today in my sermon. This is a very well-known song called Psalms 23. And it begins, The Lord is my shepherd. Well, I want you to know, thanks to God, that's relationship with God. I shall not want. That's supply. He'll supply all of your needs. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Well, that's rest for your mind, your body, and your soul. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's refreshment. He restoreth my soul. That's healing. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake, that is God's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that is testing. I will fear no evil, because that's my protection. For thou art with me. That, saints of God, is faithfulness. 
Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. Sometimes God has to discipline us to remind us who we belong to. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's hope. We have a blessed hope. We know that if we live the way God wants us to live, we know that we will have a, not only an eternal home, but we'll have a peaceful and prosperous life right here on earth. Thou anointest my head with oil. That's consecration. My cup runneth over. That's abundance. Otherwise known as superfluous blessings. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessings. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's security. Forever and evermore. That, saints of God, is eternity. I hope that I've said something that will help you along your way in your coming week. But just remember that God is strength in your weakness. And it's in your weakest hour, in your weakest time, is where the true miracle occurs. The miracle is grace. He said in his word that grace is sufficient. If you have nothing else, if you have God's grace, you have everything that you need. And if there's someone in virtual land, out there in the world, that hears this transmission, and you are still in the ark of your sins, and you're not in the ark of safety, I want to remind you the supplemental scripture, which simply says, if you believe and confess with your heart and with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he said that he will come in and sup with you. He said that you will be saved. You do not have to die and go to hell. You can be saved. He's waiting for you, right where you are. Normally we would be in the church at the altar, but God's altar is in your heart, right where you are. If you're going through, you don't know how your bills are going to be paid. You're waiting on that check, but there's nowhere to be found. Just trust in God. God will open doors that you didn't even realize existed. God will make a way. Has he ever made a way for you? God has made a way for me, and I know he'll make a way for you. Is there anyone that would like to join the church through invitation, through letter, right where you are, get in touch with our church? We're not having services now, obviously, but we do have a phone that definitely works. You can call someone and let them know if you want to be a member of our church or any church of your choice. Get with the church. Get with God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Dear Heavenly and all wise God, Lord, we come to you again as humbly as we know how, Lord. Lord, I ask you that there's somebody that's listening. There's somebody that's looking for an answer, Lord. Lord, we ask that you go out to where that person is and touch. Lord, we ask that you touch, heal, deliver, restore, and rejuvenate, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you, God, for this church. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor. We thank you, Lord, for all of our members. Lord, we ask that you watch over all of us and touch those that are sick and shut in. At this time, Lord, we ask that you watch over and touch our first lady, Audrey Dipper. Lord, we ask that you touch Mother Bailey in that place where she is at to rehabilitate herself. Lord, we ask that you touch the Meredith trustee John Carroll. Lord, we ask that you touch him, heal, and deliver. In Jesus' name. If there's anyone else that I've missed, we ask, Lord, that you touch them as well. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. today and it is our prayer that you receive something from the word of God that will help you along your journey. Just a couple of um, announcements. Um, your Bible study books are here. Um, they're here at the church so if you will come to the church um, between 
um, usually 10.30 and 11.30, um, someone will be here on Sundays to get you your book. And our goal is to get everybody their books this week. Um, so give me a call um, if you want to meet and pick up your book. Also, we're asking the church family to remember um, our um, non-perishable food drive. Um, we're collecting non-perishable food items, canned goods, rice, beans, whatever the case may be, um, so that we can um, fill the blessing box in our community. Um, this is our, our, our um, way of giving and helping, so I'm asking each of you if you would just drop your non-perishable food items off at the church. Um, and typically we're only here on Sundays, but if you want to bring something, give me a call and um, I'll meet you here. And it is our prayer that you have a blessed week this week and continue in all that's going on to be safe and trust in our God. Everybody have a blessed afternoon.